Let's talk about. Uh, let's get. Let's get in deep on the uh, DNI. Uh, DNI Ratcliffe talking about the Durham intelligence reports and what's going on. We have this story from Fox News. Former DNI Ratcliffe told Durham intelligence supports multiple indictments in probe. Hillary Clinton purportedly approved a plan to distract the public from her email scandal. Sources told Fox News. Yo. Trump was right. Mm. Everything the Trump supporters were saying about why this is happening, uh, not all of it, but a lot of it, turns out to be true. Hillary Clinton was embroiled in this scandal where she destroyed public records. They say emails. No, no, let's slow down here a minute. On the on on the merits, on the on the substance, Hillary Clinton had public records. She destroyed them. Her staffers were smashing phones with hammers. This is not about her emails. It's about something very very serious. And then the report comes out. She decided to distract from this news by accusing Trump of being a Russian spy, which took over the media in this country for years. Here's a story from Fox News. Former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, met with special counsel John Durham on more than one occasion and told him there was evidence in the intelligence to support the indictments of multiple people in his investigation into the origins of the Trump-Russia probe. Fox News first reported on Durham's latest filing, which alleged that lawyers from Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign in 2016 had paid to infiltrate servers belonging to Trump Tower and later the White House in order to establish an inference and inference and narrative to bring the federal government agencies linking Donald Trump to Russia. Let me just stress that point. Hillary Clinton's campaign paid for the infiltration, the breach of servers belonging to President of the United States to accuse him of being a Russian asset or spy or linked. Yo, okay, I don't see that as treason by the official definition, but how is that not cons- seditious conspiracy? It is. Yeah. <laughs> no, it definitely Completely. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's mind boggling because um, it, 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 Watergate was bad, right? We were talking about this before and, and, and um, uh, Bernstein, is uh, he's famous for yeah. saying over and over again, it's worse than Watergate, worse than Watergate. And I did Watergate and it's worse than Watergate. This really is worse than Watergate because Watergate was bad, right? It was a lot of bad actors, um, private individuals. But to use the apparatus of government, which has so many checkpoints that's supposed to stop this from happening. I mean, you just can't. And I've worked in the federal government when I was in the Bush administration. You just can't get access to these servers, to these tools, to these listening devices, to these spying devices, whatever it is. You have to go through so many checkpoints, and to go through those checkpoints, people have to approve it, and there's got to be a process. So, so it's not one or two or three or four or a dozen people implicated. It's literally hundreds of people who are like, "Wait a second, Ian, why do you need this special like satellite? Why, why are you doing this? Why are you trying to hack into this server in Trump Tower? And you have to get your boss to sign off here, and Lydia needs to co-sign and in, in triplicate and." Lots of people are involved in this, and they all knew what they were doing was wrong. And and so to use the power of government, again, for the crime of just not being aligned to the, to the, the powers that be, right? Donald Trump is, you were allowed to do this if they thought he was a, 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 a cartel operative, right? You're allowed to spy on people's phones. Police do it to, 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 to citizens all the time if there's implication that they're doing something illegal. But crime, Trump's crime is... I wanted to win. There's that lawyer who was involved in Trump's first impeachment, the Ukraine gate scandal, who tweeted right when Trump got inaugurated, we are going to impeach him. Yeah. And then did. And it's just brazen and out in the open and obvious. But that's why I've been saying I don't see any out from this other than some kind of civil war, because they're saying it publicly what they're doing. Mm. They published a Time Magazine article called The Shadow Campaign to Save the Election or whatever, explaining everything they did, and it's in your face. Mm -hmm. So my question is, when the Democrats and the uniparty establishment types set up the January 6th committee, and they're filing all these subpoenas against former Trump administration officials, members of the media, at minimum, to answer one of these subpoenas, it's $100,000, they say. Yeah. Because you can't just be like, sure, what do you want? No, that you have to search all the labor hours, all the legal responses and legal filings. I don't know how the average person would even be able to deal with something like that. Then you have the Durham investigation. 
Now, uh, former DNI Ratcliffe saying multiple uh, in, in indictments are possible based on this evidence. And there's already been, I think, how many how many indictments have there been in, in Durham? Is there two or, or one? S- two? Uh, Sussman. Sussman um, and the other guy, right? Uh, yeah, so I think just two. Yeah. But these, these, are, these are building up and potentially leading yeah. to more. Do you think either side in this conflict is going to be like, let's just stop? No. So what happens when neither side stops? It escalates <laughs> or, or they can start right. making right. concessions because if, if you really didn't want to stop and you want to go into these public records that got destroyed uh, and the copies of them, you'll see Sidney Blumenthal's interactions with Hillary and like running guns into Libya with Osprey Global Solutions, mm. setting up the American like a puppet state in Libya, you know, basically betraying our president Obama, who didn't want Hillary working with Sidney at all. Like if they want to go, if they really want to go all the way. Uh, but I don't think that it could ever happen. I think that it's they're going to play a limited war when it comes to this kind of thing. Take pieces, accept defeat, and they're not going to they're not going to really blow it open because if they really blow it open, then the liberal economic order is over. But why would they why would they stop? Like so so. Well, I think it would it would get stopped. I don't by what by who by the American secret military. What is, what? I don't know. I think if you really start to pry into the secret records that Hillary was trying to destroy, you realize she was trying to destroy them for a reason because they're they're covering up the American war machine in a lot of the way that it subterfuges its way into countries. But Ian, that is Hillary Clinton and everything they did against Donald Trump for years, accusing him of being a Russian spy. It's now being uncovered that they're they're they've been faking this whole thing to try and stop Trump and it didn't work. They did it to Bernie, too. The DNC yeah. spied on Bernie. Um, I don't have they, the reports. They spied on him. I don't. I, I, I want to be careful because I know that there was a lot of foul play with the Bernie Thank stuff. Thank you. For sure. Okay. Do but you have we, any? Do but you we know, don't, I don't have it pulled up. Yeah, I don't it's know. Been, pulled it's up. been like what seven years since this stuff was going on. So wow. it's been a while. But Bernie absolutely, I think, bent the knee to the, the Democratic establishment and just gave in. Yeah. There's emails about Bernie talking about should we use his Jewish uh, ancestry against him in the in the campaign and the stuff. The WikiLeaks emails, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. WikiLeaks. Yeah. I think this is Hillary's dump. Was WikiLeaks dumped it? It was the DCCC, right? The Democrat, the, the DCCC. But and again, and as bad as that is, politics is a is a scummy business. And if that's private actors being scummy people, I understand but it, it. It was his own political party doing it, it to him. Yes, crazy? awful, <laughs> awful, terrible thing. But this is using the government to do it, and that's a lot different because the government yeah. is funded by the taxpayers, and it's supposed to be the under the authority of Congress that represents the will of the people. Mm-hmm. And that's why this is a whole new level of scary because. It, it's not the DCCC. It's not political campaigns. And you've worked on political campaigns. They're vicious and nasty. Heck, we were just talking about a potential candidate who maybe was right. attempted assassination because political campaigns are nasty. But to use the power of the federal government, which is supposed to be above all of that, is a whole level that we have yet to ever see in this country. And Sed- that's that's the undoing of the nation. Seditious conspiracy. Yes. Mm, yeah. It was a year years-long effort of what we're all learning about the, with the Durham investigation, with the tampering of evidence. Was it what, that one lawyer who got indicted, he like uh, he withheld evidence or something, right? Sussman, yeah. And, and well, his first FISA um, um, request to the FISA court, which was rejected, and then he got a second one, and he did get his FISA. So he's going to say, look, I, saw, I was listening to the Trump White House legally. I got my FISA documents. But he forged all of the evidence to, wow. go, to, to go to the FISA court. Then there was, um, it was... Uh, who was it? Papadopoulos, who was a, a, a CIA asset on that email, and they removed it. To you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, can, I don't remember the specific details. Suffice it to say, they were lying about almost everything to use the power of the courts to hurt Trump's presidency and to stop him from being able to lead the way the American people wanted him to. And this is based on this story. So this is this is no, like no, no, just no, no, broke. No, no, no. This this story just broke. But I'm talking about a whole bunch of other stories. The Durham investigation is more than just this one moment. It was, I mean... Heck, it's three years in the making now at this point, the Durham investigation, right? It's been going on for a while, and it's just starting to come to light, a lot of this I mean, the Mueller probe, you know, uh, uh, investigating Donald Trump to the tune of millions of dollars, inhibiting his ability to do his job as president because they said, oh, but if he fires Comey, it'll be obstruction of justice. Comey was basically protecting, excuse me, FBI, you know, FBI, protecting his job by investigating the president on completely bunk BS. Wow. It is the bureaucracy, we, we, we won't say deep state, 
We'll say the bureaucratic state. The people who are appointed to these positions, who stay in these positions longer than the people elected to run the offices, and they don't want to lose their jobs, and they found a way to stop Trump from purging them. And then when you, and then your head starts to explode when you go to the Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell case, and you say, who was the, 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 the government lawyer who said that she could keep all of her clients confidential? Oh, it's Comey's daughter. Yeah, and I have to. And wonder. that's where you become Very just crazy, and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go bonkers. Like, do they all? Are they all related? Everyone's dating each other, yeah. married to each other. They all know each other. It's like in Hollywood <laughs> when you're out partying one night, and then all of a sudden they're like, Hey, come on! And you go to a party, and like all the celebrities are there, and you're like, What the heck? It's like it's in that house right there, but you don't know. What it's world? like another reality right over yeah. there across the street. Another like alternative universe that you're not part of that you experience just for one second and then it all disappears on you. It's yeah. it's real. Yeah, those people probably are. <laughs> a lot of those people probably are deeply in in contact. Of I would course, imagine. birds of a feather flock together. So they all hang out. They all party together, and they view it as normal. Hmm. So when Donald Trump comes in and he's not a part of that club, they just say like, "Let's shut him down," and no one's going to cross anybody that they know. They don't care. This is why I say, you know, I was talking earlier about the Joe Rogan stuff, and we'll get into that in a second. And I'm just like, I, I really don't care what these people think about him. And I think it was a mistake for him to apologize because all it does is prove that their tactic worked and it got a rise out of him. Like they trolled him effectively. And I'm just like, at this point, you're not going to convince any of these people because they hate you and they don't want to like you and they don't want to be friends with you. They want to high five their buddy while making fun of you. There's no point at which the nerdy kid walks into the bully and says, look, I'm sorry we got beef. I don't want to you know, get in your face. Let's be friends. Mm. No, the bully just push you down and say, wow, that was funny. And that's and that's where we're at because there's 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 an in group and an out group, there's separate groups, whatever it is, and the Democratic establishment and the media establishment they they all view themselves as the establishment and the in group, but there's a growing faction of anti uh, anti establishment uh, uh, individuals who don't align with them. That's what they fear, and I think they're losing. I think the decentralized internet movement, the more youthful, free, and libertarian mindset, is actually winning and expanding. And we're watching it with the cultural decay of like the Super Bowl, the Joe Rogan smears. We're watching it with what they thought they could pull off. Because I'll put it this way. If the establishment political party was as powerful as they had been 20, 30 years ago, Donald Trump would not have become president. No. There would never be an investigation. It would never be uncovered that Hillary Clinton did this. It would just be evil Donald Trump colluded and he's in prison. But because they've lost so much of their, their power as they wane and crumble, they're being exposed but they still, it's like, it's kind of sad. You know, it's like looking off to the old, you know, the, the, the old castle crumbling and there's like a withered old king, you know, scraggly being like, I'm still in charge. And no one cares and no one listens anymore. Yeah, that, that could be the only thing that could potentially save us from, from the, the, the coming civil war. Or as you said, like we're, we're probably in some sort of a cold civil war, but one that actually does turn violent. And, and what could possibly save us is the dismantling of the larger government state that maybe you elect the right person who's not left or not right, maybe just anti-establishment, who does take what used to be good about both parties. You had Rand Paul and you had Ron Wyden both say the Patriot Act is bad. Right, like this is bad. We should not be listening to people's emails. We should not. This is this is bad for the country. Right, whatever that part that used to unite some of the left and the right, uh, maybe that person could find their way into into the seat of power and dismantle a lot of these institutions and these agencies that just have. I mean, there are thousands of people right now listening to us and their little government NSA is not very far from here. Right, I mean, a couple of <laughs> seventy miles, and and they're there and they're listening. And this is their job. And the question is, are you keeping our country safe? I, I don't. I don't know if, in their if mind, you yeah. are. In their mind, they are. And and it's, it goes back to the great Will Smith movie, which was 20 years ahead of its time, Enemy of the State. I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's just an oh, awesome. Oh, man, it's been a long time since oh, I saw that. And it's so far ahead of its time. It's so, so. I wonder if Will Smith, I, I probably wouldn't want to enter into politics if you ever asked him, but it is highly libertarian in its principles. Wow. And it's and it's yeah, and then that's that's kind of where we are. That's what needs to save the country is the dismantling of this of this apparatus. Yeah, uh, it might term just limits, crumble. Term limits for administrative state for for staff. Yeah, yeah, that's maybe a start. maybe uh, you can only work in federal government for a certain amount of years hmm. before you you force retire. Gotta be you can. I agree with that. Like yeah, yeah, trying to trying to trying to remove the people is different than trying to change the system because if you remove the people, more will come. You know, yeah, we got to fix the system. I'm like literally getting flashbacks right now. Like the Democratic establishment so reminds me of like 
an abusive ex-boyfriend or something because <laughs> listen, listen, listen. They project. I don't know if you guys have ever been in like a situation where the other person you're dating is always accusing you of cheating, always yes. accusing you of being disloyal, 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 but they're the ones that's cheating the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I could see the parallel from the Russia gate. They're talking about Trump colluding with Russia, Russia, Russia. Now it's flipped back out flip back on them it just it just so reminds me of being in an abusive relationship i guess for all we know it, it was the kgb with working with hillary to push the russia uh yeah and there's no kgb anymore what are you talking about of course there's no kgb anymore <laughs> they all disappeared after the Soviet <laughs> Union fell. Yeah. i don't know what they're right. called now they'll just quit uh, yeah, uh, FS, fsb i think okay is that, is that what it is i don't really FSB. believe that they were working with hillary clinton but that'd be funny if you saw It'd the be full more circle likely than russia gate yeah, yeah. I, honestly at this point if I, if the democrats accuse someone of doing something else you need to check and make sure that they're not doing that because the odds are good that that is exactly what they're doing and this is Solinsky's rules for radicals yeah. right like this is something that they do not play around with they take it very seriously and it looks like that's what the, exactly what they're doing here. It, it is the FSB, hmm. which stands for the Federal Security Service. Oh, that sounds uh, nice. Um, I, maybe it's a different word or yeah, something. It's Russian, but, so yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's Federal Security Bureau, they call it or whatever. Yeah. But FSB is the... But, uh, you know, in reality... I mean, Putin was KGB. Yeah. yeah. They, they, these people don't didn't just cease to exist. They just reformed under different names. And, yeah. And now they're all focused on the Ukraine. Mm. Oh yeah, what's right. up with that? Yeah. I don't think <laughs> oh. that's, that wasn't one of the stories we picked uh. up tonight. But is this all propaganda? What's going on? Yeah, I think I think it's uh, the U.S. is. It, it, this, we've talked about it a bit every so often. When uh, Obama was in, you had this growing escalation and conflict in Ukraine. Donald Trump gets elected, conflict stops. Where to go? Where to go? So when they try and come out and say, "Oh, this is Vladimir Putin doing all of this." I think it's possible that Putin is being uh, uh, effectively, you know, rope doped or roped into it because uh, the U.S. wants wants uh, Ukraine and NATO. They want to build their pipeline. They want to control natural gas into Europe. Russia controls a large portion of the natural gas going into Europe, which causes high prices. The U.S. has been trying to offset this. They need Ukraine on their side because the pipes gas prom runs through Ukraine. And so under Obama, you have this uh, this protest movement, which is in support of westernization of Ukraine. Russia doesn't want that because Russia has their military base in Crimea. So they invade Crimea and that whole thing happens. When Trump gets in, the conflict stopped. When Trump is out and Biden's in, the conflict reignites. So you tell me who's, who's starting the fight. Yeah. I, I think it's the Democratic establishment. Trump had no interest in going to war. Russia, they took Crimea. But then after uh, Donald Trump gets in, it starts to die down. My friends in Ukraine are like, oh, we don't really call it a civil war. It's just separatists that are fighting, but they've been losing. Now that Biden's back in, all of a sudden, all oh, the troops are here and it's getting worse and it's getting crazier. Propaganda. I think the U.S., the, the, I, I, I shouldn't say the U.S. I feel bad for what's become of our country under the, under the uh, thumb of these crackpot despots like the, the Democratic establishment, the Republican establishment, the neocons, the neolibs. These are deeply, deeply evil people. They think they have a right to, de to, to destroy, to invade, because the ends justify the means. And they'll tell you to your face and look you in the eyes and say all of the great luxuries you've experienced in your life are because we sacrificed for you. Because we went to war and we stole and we plundered and we enslaved. And my response to these people is like, what makes you think I'm okay with any of that? Mm. And they're like, well, you got all these computers, you got all this great technology, all from the petrodollar. And I'm like, bro, I'd have no problem living with some chickens and building myself a little cabin and living a simpler life. But they don't want that. The powerful establishment, they want to be the dictators. They want to control. They want the empire. And they think the American people live a slightly higher standard of living. Every time we do this, we're going to keep doing it. Those aren't my morals. I don't agree with that. They seem to. And so they do what they do. Under Donald Trump, his principles were, no, if the American people work hard and work for each other, we'll be successful and we'll have things for ourselves. And the Amer America first, protect our borders. And I'm like, that makes sense to me. Yeah. The neocon neolib establishment is like, no, if we just put pressure on other countries and put them under our boot, we don't need to do any work at all. We'll just get free money. Yeah, I also think since the time of, of, of what? since the dawn of man, but I mean, just looking at the, at the ancient Romans and Caesar, I think every leader 
This may be a guy statement, no offense to the ladies in the room, but I think every male leader has felt like I will truly be a leader when I take my people to war. Mm -hmm. I feel like the wartime president is like an aspiration, sadly, and I think it's a terrible thing. Um, And I I wouldn't be surprised if Obama had a little bit of that. Bush certainly had that, Bush Cheney. Um, And I think think Biden has that a little bit as well. Like when I go to war and I lead my army, then I am the manhood of of, of the president, the fullness of men. Now, I, I noticed a name you didn't say. I don't think Trump had that. He did not. I don't think he cared. It's yeah. amazing because he got painted as the overly um, like macho, yeah. thinking that he had something to prove, blah, 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 blah. He did not start a new war. I love it yeah. when he came out on that, that one famous moment where he was asked about a weapons deal with Saudi Arabia. And he's just like, it's great. We're going to make a lot of money. It's going to be really good for the economy. It's billions and billions of dollars. And these anti-war leftists were just like, he just admitted what the U.S. does. Trump didn't care about going to war. Yeah. He didn't want our troops. He even said, why do we still have troops in Germany? Yes. Why do we have troops in, in these other countries? Why do we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, quite frankly, yeah. we have hundreds of thousands of troops all over the world. 30,000 in Germany, 20,000 in Italy, 40,000 in, 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 in South Korea. How many we have, in Japan? I mean, yeah. In, in Okinawa. It's, and we have, Why? 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 Why is it? Why are we still defending Japan? Like their their economy is is not as good as ours, but it's pretty darn good. Their their quality of life and sophistication and technology right, yeah. is as good as ours. Why are we? Why why? What are we I'll, doing? I'll, I'll I'll tell you something interesting. I saw a meme. It was a, a post on 4chan of the when when, the, when the, it was a what was it Philadelphia firebombed that uh, that that neighborhood. You guys remember that? Mm-mm. Can you look that up? The move. Yeah 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 yeah. Uh, see, I don't even know the full details on it. But they said, ask the average Chinese person about Tiananmen Square, and they won't they won't be able to tell you what it is. Mm. Show them this picture and ask them what it is. And Amer- show an American this picture, ask them what it is, and they won't be able to tell you either. This is uh, the 1985 MOVE bombing refers to the May 13, 1985 incident in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States, Jeez. when the Philadelphia Police Force Department, Police Department, bombed the residential home occupied by the militant MOVE organization. What? It's not the same thing as Tiananmen Square, by any means. You know, I'm a, a peaceful protest of college students oh, and yeah. like The Philadelphia militant. Fire Department let the subsequent fire burn out of control following right. a standoff. So they basically right. burn these people alive. Wow. Right. Crap. And there's Waco. And, they, and there's, we, we, we okay. have our bad moments. Oh, and, sure. Uh, but the reason I bring this up is I, not, to, not to derail, but most most Americans probably couldn't tell you. They probably don't know how many military bases around the world we have. They don't know they're living at the heart of the empire. Yeah, 113 at least, or 100 some. I don't know the actual number, but it's a lot um, of the submarines we don't know about. Nobody I, knows I, about. And and that's why it's funny if you ever listened or follow on social media, um, now the Olympics, and people are like, how come everyone seems to speak English? You're like, <laughs> that's why. Yeah. You know, yes, our, our cartoons and our movies and Hollywood and all that, but why do all these people speak English? It's not because of, of, of they, they like our TV shows. It's because the American military might. But why did everyone speak Latin or, or back then actually ancient Greek? Because they ruled the world. Mm-hmm. And no matter where you went in the empire, you spoke the common language because they were in charge. Why does everyone speak English? And who's trying to supplant that? It's not Germany, and it's not South Africa, and it's not uh, uh, Chile. It's China. And And they want everyone to start speaking Mandarin. That is their goal. But Trump was just like, why are we doing any of this? Yeah. Build factories in America. And the establishment Mm. was like, shut him up. See, what people need to understand is, Americans produce relatively little to the amount of our uh, to the amount of wealth we have because we control the petrodollar. You want to buy oil, you want to use oil. It's our dollar that that you 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 got, you got to use to do it and uh, well, the United States makes dollars. So that means loans go out to Americans on demand. We then have those dollars, we can buy more things, but for other countries they have to buy dollars first. Other countries have to produce large quantities to be able to have a high enough GDP to trade for dollars to, to get more access. We in America, we, we, we live luxury off of relatively little compared to many other countries. And someone is trying to supplant that. And the neocons will tell you we need to have all of these bases, especially in, in and you mentioned Japan and in, in the, uh, the, in the Pacific, because we have to keep the shipping routes open. And Trump would say, why don't we just move the factories back to America? And we don't have to keep the trade routes open. Why do we need to have the uh-huh. Navy make sure we can get our vessels from China without them being taken over by pirates? How about we just make everything here? And then I don't care what happens on the high think. seas. Wrong think. Stop. Yeah, wrong think. Stop. Exactly. Exactly. Paradigm because shifts are hard for people. And that's where the, the left and the right, the paradigm shift of whatever Trump was, were like, no, that's not how we do things here. I love, I love this comment someone sent me. I, when I tweeted about the celebrities at the Super Bowl not wearing masks, huh. they said... Things are looking pretty good in the capital, but it's a little rough out here in the districts. Yeah. 
And I'm just like, interesting. Yep, that would be uh, Hunger Games. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yep. The, the, in the Hunger Games film, I love it when when uh, uh, they go to the party and the rich people are oblivious to how awful life is for the average person, and they're drinking Ipecac to vomit and keep eating. Yeah. And I thought about this, and I said, those celebrities at the Super Bowl are the victors in the Hunger Games. In the Hunger Games, the poor people from the districts, once they win, they get to go to the Capitol and be rich and go on tour and, and laugh and gloat. That's what these celebrities are. They're not members of the political establishment elite. They're not part of that powerful industry club. They're the people who are lifted up and put out there as the face to keep everyone in deep slumber and, you know, lie to So them. long as they say the right things. Mm -hmm. Yep. But as Joe Rogan is experiencing, if you have said anything that bucks the system, then they need to take you down. We were driving home from um, the cabin yesterday. We went to this cabin up in Pennsylvania. And I was saying, life is so good. I was talking, thinking they were saying it. And, and then I thought, for me right now, mm. and then I just thought about all these people that it's not. Like, I was just like, life in general is amazing. For me, because I was born in the United States with mo some money, these mm. poor people, man. And then I started to get depressed. And that was like shaking me out of my, my mode where I need to be to help people. Bro, the last thing you'll ever want to do is read about Henry Kissinger. Read about him and Africa and, the, and all that stuff. And you will probably cry yourself to sleep. You hear about what this, what, what the, the I don't, I don't want to see the United States. It's, it's the global power structure. But I mean, you know about the mon International Monetary Fund, the SWIFT system, how they control people. The things they do, man, you know, they think they're smarter. They think they're better than you. And they're deeply, deeply amoral people who view humans as cattle. Mm -hmm. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to Timcast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.